So this is the iPhone XS Max, and this is the oldest Max phone to run the iOS 18 Beta 1. And I want to make this video review quickly to tell you how it runs, show you how it runs here in this video to kind of give you an idea how your Max device, if you're still using one of these, will perform. started here i do want to mention that to download this ios 18 beta right now you do need to sign up to be a developer because this is developer beta public beta is available next month also keep in mind this does take around 6.8 gigs so it's near a 7 gig download on the phone and um so it will take a little bit of time so do keep that in mind you need a storage and you need to be a developer currently eventually it will be for everybody public um, and technically everybody can get it now but you do have to sign up to be a developer if you want to do that now the first thing i want to talk about and look at is the dark mode the tinting of the icons let's go ahead and take a look at the one of the biggest changes here so you can see right there when you go ahead and tint things just like with the iphone 11 we are seeing issues with icons properly tinting immediately but give it a second and they do tend to appear pretty good so this is gonna work just fine. This is not a heavy feature. Most phones can do uh, something like this. It's just tinting the icons. So if you have a 10s Max and you think it's gonna give you issues with that, you don't have to worry about that whatsoever. Scrolling over here to Geekbench, you'll see this one is the A12 Bionic. So this chipset is not even anywhere near what we have now. It also is clocked in at a much lower 2.49 gigahertz with memory of around four gigs of RAM. So the slowest phone in the lineup getting this is the iPhone XR. That one has three gigs of RAM. This one should perform a little bit better due to the nature of four gigs of RAM. So if I go ahead and click over here, hit edit, and I hit add widget here, let's go over here, go to batteries, let's see if we can add that in there. Let's swipe through here. Let's go ahead and go like this. So you can see we're getting a little bit of issue there, unless it just doesn't let me make the widget smaller. Let me go ahead and add another widget here and we'll scroll down to clock and actually that's not a resizable one. Let's do, how about screen time? Yeah, that should be resizable. Let me go ahead and bring this on to a separate page. Seen that didn't work. See how that popped away. Let's go over here and I'll bring this into a brand new page and see if we can resize it here. So let's hit edit home screen. Yeah, so we need more space. That's why I wasn't working on the initial screen, but you see a little bit of a, see it takes a second. Yeah, so I don't know what that is. That doesn't look very proper. So some of the widgets are a little bit off right now. Some of them don't resize properly. So like that doesn't, I don't know what that white bar is. That doesn't look like it's supposed to be like that. So these are some of the little things you'll run into. Going to the control center, I also find this area pretty, pretty, laggy right now if i hit the plus icon and it's not that it's not usable it's just a little bit slow watch when i go through these controls it's just kind of choppy it kind of looks like a budget phone when it's scrolling through the control center right now so definitely not um super smooth it honestly feels like a galaxy a series when i'm scrolling through like with the xeno cpu when i'm scrolling through right now on the control center so that's an area they're going to clean up in the future and i don't think it'll be this laggy down the line but you can go ahead and add these things in here and you should be able to resize them. And you could see that one's resizable, that one's resizable. See how it just kind of chopped over to the corner. Overall, it generally works pretty well though. It's just a little bit slow. And I've heard some people are only having that issue. That's about it. That's like the only issue they're having is the control center being a little bit laggy. So if you have this on 10s Max, the iOS 18, let us know what your experience is like so far. All right, so let's run through the home screen, see if we can get any lag on here. And so far you can see generally just running through the OS, pretty fine. Let's go over here, looks good. Pulling the control center is good. Pulling down the notifications tray is good. So generally pretty functional and usable. Let's head over into settings now and we'll scroll back. Let me get up out of here and let's go out of here. Pretty good there. Apps pulls those up good. You can see a little icons taking a second to load, but generally performs pretty functional. This is still a usable phone in 2024. It really is, especially if you don't overload the storage and you don't, you know, you keep enough space so it doesn't get all laggy because it's running out of storage, but pretty good there. 
in settings. So it's kind of impressive that this six near six year old phone can run this thing this smooth. It's pretty impressive. Actually, I quite like it. Let's go to battery here and we'll hit battery health and charging. We'll talk a little bit about battery health and charging. So the beta definitely hits your battery initially after a couple days. It seems to get a little bit better, but the beta definitely drains more battery than the standard official version. I've noticed on my iPhone 15 Pro especially, um, but it's not like insane amounts. They they put out a pretty stable uh, first edition with a couple of bugs and a couple of lags. The most thing I notice is certain times when you're opening up applications, even some of the base apps will crash sometimes. That's what I've noticed so far. Now let me go ahead and take this tint off because I'm getting tired of looking at that tint. You might as be as well. Let's go to the automatic and let's go ahead and just put this on the dark mode. If you customize this dark mode, you click this, you can actually make that a little bit darker and that looks a little bit cleaner right there. You see that widget's just not appearing now. So there's an example of something that might occur if you download one of these betas. Let's check the camera. Right, so let's go ahead and check the camera. So shutter speed's good. Telephoto lens works good. Zooming, no lag there. You can still do 10X, which is pretty nice. Portrait mode, just a second to load up those portrait cameras. And we'll go over here to video. You can record video just fine. Take a photo, that's pretty good. And we'll go over here to slow motion, decent. Let's go ahead and flip it around. And if you're having issues with your phone, keep in mind that everybody's phone will perform the same. Certain people run into bugs, some people don't. Uh, personally, I'm mine's doing pretty good here. I'm not seeing any major issues on even this 10s max to run this lighter version of the ios 18 i say lighter because this won't be getting the apple intelligence and it's running pretty darn decent a little bit of chop there on that first scroll out of the camera though all right so let's go ahead and open up some applications here and just kind of see how it does now opening applications i think it's pretty insane how well this is performing this is just great. Oh, do we get, do we right? Oh yeah, we had a crash. Every time I say something about how well something performs, there it goes, just giving you an issue. But seriously, if I put my SIM in here, I could use this. Would it be my favorite? No, because it's definitely not as snappy, nowhere near as fast as a newer phone, but could I use it? Absolutely, I could still use this. Still a usable phone. I think the four gigs of RAM makes a true difference though. You can see very slow to launch the game though. So if you're looking for a fast game launch, you can see it still has those little, little dance over there on the side buttons though. But yeah, you can still play some casual games, no problem, like Crossy Road right there. You've seen that lag coming out though, the animation almost dropped it. The animation was a little bit laggy. And taking a look here at this game, Games will take a while to launch, but you see the game mode will kill the background activities. And I'm wondering if this game mode might actually improve the performance on these older iPhones due to the fact that these older iPhones don't have as much power. So shutting down background processes might actually make these perform better. But so far the load is pretty darn slow. Like the 15 Pro would have been loaded this eons ago. So I'm actually just gonna come out of there. You see it got a little bit choppy. And go to iMovie here. And again, this is not a speed test, so don't expect like perfect clicks and all that stuff. Let's go ahead and check out this movie. Can still edit video. And I'm noticing, I just got a little bit uncomfortable on my finger because I'm noticing this beta is heating up this corner and section of the phone quite a bit. So I gotta move my hand because it's pretty uncomfortable. But yeah, you can still smoothly render out video here, although it's not gonna be the fastest thing in the world. Open up the news app, we'll see how this performs. Again, just some basic smartphone apps. And you'll see tons of Apple news in there. And pretty decent. I, I noticed the animation is slower. That's something I am noticing. Just a slower animation here for sure. See how long this game takes to load. This is a much older game and it doesn't really require much power. So you can see downloading the game data. And we should be in in just a second here. And decent. A little bit laggy there. You seen that little chop? A little bit laggy, even on a basic game. So, but yeah, you could still play. Of course, don't expect max graphics. There's gonna be a lot of games you can't play. They're not gonna run that well. But you know, you could play some casual games. You could play a couple of more intense games. You just have to have a little patience. That's how about some web browsing? Are we gonna run into any issues here? Let's go to Apple. We'll go to Apple.com. We'll check how this thing performs, and you'll see. Not bad. 
the course is still fast enough to purchase yourself a new iPhone. Of course, <laughs> they're not gonna make it that slow. They want to make sure you're able to still purchase online a new iPhone with your old iPhone. We know that. So let's go ahead and click the plus sign and we'll go to yahoo.com here How about that one. Just another website and you'll see not bad. So web browsing. Okay. I have ran into issues on my, even my 15 pro a couple of times when I use the reader mode, like if I click something right here, um, we'll go right here. If I try to like show the reader mode, it worked here just fine, but I had this crash on the 15 Pro. So some of the features, the new Safari like changes might crash once in a while. Um, they, they don't happen live on camera. They typically just happen out of nowhere. Like I'd be browsing something, I'd be doing something, that boom, that something crashes. So or there goes the app, it's gone. Like that's what happens. It's just like, it's random. It's hard to catch on camera. I am noticing the battery is draining in this video very fast though. Not a super fan of that, but the 10s Max also was never a super powerful phone when it comes to uh, battery life and percentages and stuff like that. I always thought this one was only average for the battery life, so I'm not too mad. So let's go ahead and try this here to see if this stutters at all. No stutter going back through the apps. Got to reload there on Free Fire. How about something else? A little bit of a reload. So yeah, this phone's not even holding apps in the background very well. That one was decent and yep, a reload on dead trigger. So you're not going to hold apps. It just doesn't have the power anymore to, to hold a bunch of apps in the background. This is why I think a lot of the old, phone, old phones, especially the older ones, wouldn't be able to run Apple intelligence and all this heavier use. You need more RAM. And now, you know, Apple got away with putting uh, low RAM in phones for a while, but nowadays um, they can't get away from this. They need to start putting more RAM in these iPhones. So this is one of the cons right here. You see of something like a 10s, 10s max, 10R, stuff like that right there. All right. So I'm going to run a geek bench on this beta one and I'll be back when the final score is in. And if you're liking these uh, videos on the older, older iPhones in terms of seeing how they perform, how do they run? Let me know if you want to see these continue. Cause I could potentially bring these back again when we get further along down the beta and we have more uh, polished improvements to the performance. Cause that will improve over the weeks to come. We might even be seeing beta two soon. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll be back when the final scores. All right. So the final scores are in and I got a 13, 14 on the single core and a 25, 62 on the multi-core. So not impressive, but not the worst I've seen. Um, it's also not that different from something like an iPhone 11, but definitely a little bit lower on the single core. You can see 1281 versus 1647. And then if we go down here, you'll see the iPhone 11, the 35, 88, 10S Max, 26, 31. So even 11 performs better, like in my previous video. The iPhone 10S Max here, just not a super powerful phone anymore, but definitely enough still to functionally run iOS 18, probably for what might be its last update. Um, this might be the last update we see for the iPhone XS Max. So that's gonna wrap it up here for me on this phone right here. Of course, phones have gotten super fast, and of course, if your Wi-Fi is slow, that's gonna further enhance the slowness of a device. So depending on your Wi-Fi speeds, your internet connection, if you have a slower carrier, that can affect things as well, um, which I can't showcase because everybody has different carriers and different cell reception and stuff like that. But um, if I would conclude this, I would say this is still a usable functional phone um, that cannot hold apps in the background, doesn't doesn't do well with that, can launch games, run games, but it does it a little bit slow and um, can do the, the basic customizations and run the basic iOS 18 features, but it's not going to be anything blazing quick. So this is probably a good year to consider an upgrade if you have this phone. Um, but is it decent if you want to pick up a side Max to play around with iOS 18? Yeah, if you could find one for cheap or someone's like, here, I don't need this phone. Playing around with iOS 18 would be pretty fun on this phone right here. So thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know if you want to see any of these other older iPhones on iOS 18. I will catch you all in the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well. And peace. Peace.